How did you build your brand throughout the years? The, the impact drives request and income. The average speaker get around 25 calls a year, according to the National Speakers Association. I get over 3,000. And so people, there are people who talk in terms of branding. To me, the greatest brand impact you can make is getting coaching on how to create special moments in your presentation that will impact that audience individually and collectively because every audience has a personality of its own and there are audiences inside of each audience. So your goal is when you speak is to use your story that will trigger certain things, stories that will touch the heart, stories that are funny, stories that will create insight, bridges in the story where people said, that's my story, that's me, he's talking to me. And so through that, they leave there feeling better about themselves but talking about you. But you can have the best brochure and the best marketing strategy but once you get this microphone and you don't create an experience, we are, we are emotional people and we have emotional memory. And so you, you, the goal is to get coaching on how to tell your story because you can't see the picture when you're in the frame. And so you want to have the kind of name and reputation that when you speak, that people who are in that audience, as a result of hearing you speak, they will never be the same again. I have a slide presentation, and this guy, he sent me this slide, and it had on there, it's not over until, and he had and he, on this side. Yeah, the tattoo, the tattoo I win, tattoo. yes. <laughs> he was gonna kill himself. And he put this tattoo on his chest so he can see it. And he had a gap between the statement, he said the gap represents when he's having challenges that, that causes him to go within to remind him of who he is and to take him through that experience. And because of the story that I told, live full and die empty, that he decided that he was going to live full. He decided there are some things in him that he was supposed to do and that life is God's gift to you and how you live your life is your gift to God. And he had no right to rob God of the gift that he had. He wanted to live his life in such a way that God would not say, oh my God, I regret making you. <laughs> I need to repent. <laughs> yeah, so your branding is done at the microphone. I don't have a brochure, never had any business cards. And I tell you that the, the, the I was in here's a very important thing that I learned from Mike. Asking he fried let us say together, fry the fish. Fry the fish while the grease is hot. While the grease is hot. So I spoke for a major pharmaceutical company. And they had, they had a campaign called The Danger Zone. So I was seated next to the CEO and the marketing director. And I said, what is this about? He said, oh, we're teaching doctors how to communicate with their patients to get them to take their hypertension medication and avoid having a heart attack or a stroke. So I asked him, I said, why do you take your medication? Do you have hypertension? He said, I want to live. I said, then why not call it the success zone? Mm. He said, whoa, that's a good idea. Now, they, I just finished speaking to them. He said, can you train doctors? I said, absolutely. <laughs> and let us say together, absolute faith. Absolute faith. And so as a result of that, they paid for me to go to 35 cities, including Sweden, and one month. Monday through Thursday, 45 minutes a day. They paid me $640,000. Wow. Mm. One month, 16 speeches, okay? So 
Why did he do that? First of all, he was under the spirit and impact of the presentation. What's very important in a presentation is your rhythm, your passion, your energy, and your story used strategically to expand their vision of themselves and to create an interruption. That's what we do. We create an interruption in the minds of the audience. That interruption causes them to begin to look at themselves differently, transform their self-explanatory style, as psychologists would say, and empower them to live out of their imagination rather than their history. And that's what I spent a lot of time with Mike Williams on. You can't read the label when you're locked in a box. And so he, he pulled out. When I spoke at the Georgia Dome, I thought that speech should have been, I gave a speech about John Leslie and I playing Connect Four. And, and so we had already labeled it, the, the cassette tapes. And people came to the table and say, hey, you have that, that speech, uh, you gotta be hungry? <laughs> and I said, excuse me? Yeah, you gotta be hungry. I, I know you and your son play Connect Four, but we want you gotta be hungry. I had to change everything. Never assume that you know what's gonna resonate with an audience. Always do your due diligence. And all that getting, get understanding. And so I spent a lot of time. There's a, a company here, Brian Buffini. I spoke for his company. He's involved in real estate. So Brian has had everybody, and he's a decent speaker. He had no idea who he was bringing in. I did a lot of research on them. They have a theme. Oh, by the way, we're never too busy for referrals. That's a theme, all right? So I did a lot of research on them. Then I called all of his people in the room, his top people, and I interviewed them, the top performers. When I got on stage, not only did I bring their story in there, but I talked to people in the audience and said, if you were me and you had to speak to this audience, tell me at least three things they need to hear. And then I married what they told me and what Brian told me, the guy who wrote the check, and what the audience said, people in the audience. Those are three different perspectives. And then I marry those things to create an experience with my story. When I got through, Brian Buffini said, whoa. He said, listen, I've had everybody. You, you took our mission statement. You, you, you told the story of our top performers. He said, I want every speech that you have for the rest of the year. Oh. I will write the check. However, you got 10 speeches or 20 or 30 speeches, I'll pay for every one of them. Because no one had interviewed him to the extent that I did and came in. So what in this industry, it's, it's wide open and particularly for women because the, the majority of people who go to seminars and workshops and in corporations are females. And so it's about learning how to use your story or somebody else's story. Just think about Marianne Williams. She doesn't tell her story. She talk about a book she read called uh, Course in Miracles. When she wrote the book, The Return to Love. And she said, according to the Course in Miracles. You know nothing about Marianne. When she speaks, she doesn't tell anything about herself personally. And so if you love people and you speak from your heart, and that's what my goal is, I believe that Leo Tolstoy, the Russian author, and this is the place where my life is, he said, as I face inevitable death, what in the meaning and purpose of my life will not be undone or destroyed when I'm gone? And I believe that the speakers that I train and the people that I influence and the people that they train and the people that they influence and we are God's pyramid, that they will go into a future that I won't see. And that work will not be undone or destroyed when I'm gone. And I believe that this is the time for us to build a legacy and we're going through a very turbulent time, but it's an incredible time because in the middle of a surgery, it looks like a murder. Thank <laughs> you.